are on Tira Trail on Thetis Island on the west coast of British Columbia. A couple of days ago, when we were hiking this trail, we heard a very loud, very boisterous drumming, and we followed the noise, expecting to see a large pileated woodpecker. We wanted to get some footage of it. Boy, were we surprised to see a woodpecker that we've never seen before. The woodpecker turned out to be a red-breasted sapsucker. Join us on our hike today as we explore the glamour and the life of the red-breasted sapsucker. And here is where we heard it. Up in that tree. Show yourself. It won't show itself at all. Because I want it to, that's why. our red-breasted sapsucker drumming. Is it gonna go again? Song sparrows. Spotted towhee. There's our pileated woodpecker. Orange crowned warbler. No, I guess we want it too badly. All right then, we'll carry on. Red-breasted sapsuckers are only found on the west coast of North America and on the Pacific Slope. There are two subspecies or forms of red-breasted sapsucker. The more northern populations have more red on their heads and less white on their backs. Their backs tend to be pretty black. The southern forms have more of your typical sapsucker white and black stripes on their face. For the longest time, red-breasted sapsuckers were thought to be in the same species as the red-naped sapsucker and the yellow-bellied sapsucker, which are two closely related species. It's not surprising. Red-breasted sapsuckers will hybridize with yellow-bellied sapsuckers and red-naped sapsuckers where the ranges of these species overlap. Hybridization is what happens when separate species like red-breasted sapsuckers, red-nape sapsuckers, and yellow-bellied sapsuckers interbreed and produce baby sapsuckers. The babies end up having characteristics that look like both species, so they can sometimes look like a blend of the two species. It's a really cool phenomenon. 
Red-breasted sapsuckers are found in mixed forests of conifers, aspens, willows, and alder trees. Red-breasted sapsuckers feed by drilling teeny tiny, evenly spaced holes in the trunks of trees. It almost looks like a person has drilled these holes. They look so neat and so orderly. While we were taking some photos, we came across a tree that is just full of red-breasted sapsucker sap wells. Let's go take a look. So here's the tree. And if we get closer, see all those little holes? It's just full of them. So why do red-breasted sapsuckers drill all those teeny tiny holes? They feed on the sap that oozes from the holes. Red-breasted sapsuckers will also eat some of the tissues that are part of the tree, and they also love to eat the insects that are attracted to the oozing sap. Red-breasted sapsuckers aren't the only birds that use those neat teeny little sap well holes. Rufous hummingbirds love to hang around with red-breasted sapsuckers. Rufous hummingbirds will actually follow red-breasted sapsuckers around during the day. As the red-breasted sapsuckers open up the sap wells to get the sap flowing, the rufous hummingbirds come in later and take advantage of all that flowing sap and the insects that it attracts. Hybridization is what happens when... Whoa! Well, we just got buzzed by a rufous hummingbird. <laughs> All right. Like other woodpeckers, red-breasted sapsuckers drill nesting holes in deciduous or conifer trees. If you want to find a red-breasted sapsucker hole, you're going to have to look way up the tree. Red-breasted sapsuckers like to have their holes high above the ground, anywhere from 50 to 60 feet above the ground or even higher. Both male and female red-breasted sapsuckers will excavate the nesting hole, and both will incubate the eggs that are laid in there. Red-breasted sapsuckers will return to the same tree to nest every year, but they might not necessarily return to the same hole. They usually dig a fresh nesting hole. Red-breasted sapsuckers rely on a temperate climate with plenty of mixed forest. They are the least migratory of all of the sapsucker species. There are two factors that will cause a decline in populations of red-breasted sapsuckers. Forest cutting in the northwest is one factor. All woodpeckers need trees to feed and to breed. That's where they get their sap from, and that's where their nesting holes are carved. The fewer mixed forests that are available for red-breasted sapsuckers, the smaller the populations are going to be. The second factor that will contribute to the decline of red-breasted sapsucker populations is climate change. Red-breasted sapsuckers are very dependent on a temperate climate. Just a three degrees Celsius increase in summer temperatures will mean a 93% loss of the current summer habitat of red-breasted sapsuckers. That's a lot. There's only so far north that red-breasted sapsuckers can shift if the climate gets too warm. So they really need these temperate forests to stay intact and healthy. Thank you for joining me on our stroll through red-breasted sapsucker territory. We did hear one drumming in the background, but unfortunately on this hike, we didn't see him. Please let me know in the comments section what your favorite woodpecker is, and if you've ever seen those tiny, neat little holes in deciduous trees. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Like and subscribe. Bird Glamour is made possible by viewers like you.